Now, since the start of the war in Ukraine, we've been keeping in touch with Paul Hodgson, a teacher originally from Washington in Tynemuir, who has a home in Kyiv with his partner, Nadia. Well, Paul spent much of his time using a school minibus to transport those caught up in the conflict away from the capital and to the safety of the Moldovian border. He's now expanding his relief effort, despite seeing the price of fuel double in the past few weeks. Dawn Thewlis reports. For most of us, scenes like this would prompt a pretty swift exit. But Paul Hodgson has stayed in Ukraine and continues to offer help to those trapped in the war zone. People have been so generous back at home and we've had lots of vehicles donated. Um, and they're basically running around the country doing different jobs now. So some are doing, um, some are ferrying people, um, some are ferrying aid. Um, just trying to get them all working at, at, you know, at the same time now and trying to do as much as we can. So we've got a lot of volunteer helpers out here now who are working with us and a lot of partnership organisations. So it's just helping really to um, get everybody coordinated and, and get as much done as we can. So it's rather than it just being us now, we kind of feel like we're working as much more of a team now. So it's really a, a joint effort. Paul feels Ukraine is in a war of attrition with Russia with no early end in sight. But he says most people are managing to remain calm. In the West where we are, it, it's, it's fairly quiet. You do still get odd um, air raid sirens going off. Uh, we've had a couple today, which was quite unusual today because there hasn't been many this week. Um, but I think the, the lesson is really that anywhere can be reached. So when the sirens do go off, it's better to take note that the, you know, something's happening. Um, but really the hot part of the war is, is definitely in the east and the south at the minute. But obviously there's still a lot of people need moving from um, like Hassan and Zaporizhia and, and sort of Donbass area. So that's kind of where we're trying to focus more now. So what about his family back home? Are they worried about him? Uh, I, th I think they're all right, you know, I think they're all right. We, we do sort of contact each other regularly. So, you know, they know what's going on and, um, and we keep in touch pretty regular. So I think everybody knows it's, uh, it's, it's probably a very different picture that we feel on the ground. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in regular contact with the family, so that's okay. It, it keeps them uh, from worrying um, overly. So, and then they've got a good picture about what's going on here as well from, from our own perspective, as well as what they see on the news. Now, it 